How you guys doing? Just so good, man. Just so great. You know, I'm not bad today because there's this app you can get where uh, you get beverage samples delivered to you based on Mm, your tastes. And based on my taste today, I'm drinking a delicious White Claw watermelon. Oh, oh, I had those not long ago. Fucking delicious. Nice choice. You're about to experience my first sip right now. Oh, my God. I feel so lucky. Ooh, that is refreshing. Yeah, nice, right? Crispy. Not a single complaint over here. Well, yeah, the, the the good white claws aren't just good; they're great. That's uh, that's my experience. They're either like not too bad or like, whoa, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Still hundred calories a can. Okay, sick. Water, alcohol, sugar, flavor, acid. <laughs> Everything I mean, the body needs. The body oh, yeah. does sometimes need acid. Well, are you a Jays fan? You better believe it, buddy. I'm a sucker for the Jays logo. It's classic. It's nice. It's classic. The color scheme is classic. Like, you really can't go wrong with red, white, and blue. Um, yeah. All the teams in that division, actually. Yanks, Sox. I mean, I hate them, but great unis. Yep. Cla- true classics yeah <sighs> yankees logo potentially the most recognizable logo in sports yeah the pinstripes it's just iconic it's iconic fucking okay, hate them know. but yeah <laughs> wow just almost in unison Fuck. that was amazing brutal. <laughs> fucking brutal. hate them yeah. fucking hate them <laughs> motherfuckers I'm really trying to find out a way to put this camera up in such a fashion where it doesn't look like you're just seeing either nothing but my chin or no, actually so far it's just that. It's just nothing but my chin. It's it's, it's not great. <laughs> what if you just like hold the camera the entire time and then it's like live on the scene with James? Mm. Coming at you from my house uh, right here. It's your boy, James. Uh, trying to be a professional human and doing not an awesome job, but, you know, having uh, uh, something of a time of it. Solid six out of ten. <clears throat> yeah. Boy. Yeah, solid six out of ten. That sounds about right. Yeah. Actually, hold the phone. Hold up. Ooh. I'm going to hop off mic here for a second. I got a plan. <laughs> It sounds dangerous. <laughs> Welcome to my parents' house. How'd you do in the hockey pool tonight? Oh, not well. I did not set my lineup today. Oh, fuck. yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. Well, that I was gonna do it. before the uh, before the deadline, but then I got. I got bit by the, you can't make any changes until you change your IR because somebody's not eligible. Oh, man. And, and with COVID and all these postponed games and everything, like it's been a fucking disaster. Yep. I can only imagine how leagues have been faring that have like 30 guys in them, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah. Like what a joke. Yeah. At least in our league, there's always somebody decent to pick up. <clears throat> but. Exactly. Exactly. I've really, oh really God. enjoyed that. But it's getting to the point now where, like, I need to start making offers. If I'm going to make this push, I need to start making offers to the people that are probably not going to make the playoffs to see if I can, uh, you know, load up the roster for playoffs. Yeah. I'm playing Aaron this week, though. And, man, Aaron and, and Everett, fuck, they've been stupid good. I remember back to the draft when Everett was making his picks, and I was like, look at this fucking joker. He's going to get smoked. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. Seriously. He was just just like like going down the list, picking the next guy. Right? Yeah. Like, And of course, he's like, 
unbeatable almost until last week when one seven and one bad brown comes in and fucking <laughs> annihilates them like <laughs> it was good to see you can't write this shit no <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing about fiction it usually has to make sense yeah. reality <laughs> well it rarely does yeah all right i fixed my camera kinda <laughs> it looks good too good lighting good angle yeah damn man yeah well there's the sun rapidly disappearing from the, the, uh, the background uh, so this will get worse as the podcast goes on but that's fine i was gonna <sighs> say daylight savings is doing doing you a hell of a favor man that natural light that's, that's <clears throat> and as the natural light disappears we do get to experience james after dark Ooh. You know the one. <laughs> Love that. I was going to let you keep going. All right. Anyways. Well, yeah. I, it's just that over and over. <laughs> oh, I know. Careless whispers? Yeah. <laughs> but when it's that good, is do you really want it to end ever? Just keeps going around? It's, it's fine. Uh, hey, it's Press X to Podcast. Press X to Podcast. This is episode six of the face season. I think at this point we just have to stick with the face season. We cannot workshop the name anymore. No, yeah. no. I, <clears throat> I I felt good about it pretty much from the jump. As soon as we started, as soon as we decided face season, then, you know, that was it. What else do you need? Yeah. And if y'all been missing my mug over the past couple weeks, you know, make sure you get on the video edition of this week's podcast because your boy's back and he's looking good. I'm just going to say it. You're going to have to take a look for yourself, but, you know. Yeah, James right with... Yeah, exactly. He would agree. Rhett with a face? So much better than Rhett without a face. I have to say. For sure. Purple crown? Sick of it. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, I was going to switch it up to Yokozuna, but, you know. There's no losing with Yokozuna. Classic. Certainly not. Certainly not. You try to get your shoulder up when you've got a 700-pound man sitting on your chest. It's huh? it's scarcely possible. <laughs> Although I can remember a few a few fine yeah. moments when lifting Yokozuna. Not unless you're the Hulkster. Like the... Oh yeah. Not unless you're the Hulkster. Yeah, baby, running wild. Oh well. Okay. Now that yeah. we've established that part of the canon, now that we've gotten to the Hulk part of the conversation, yes. Now the podcast can truly begin. Fuck yes. <laughs> I must say. Your interest and in, in obsession, I might say, with Hulk Hogan is borderline terrifying. Hey, man, he is the host of this year's WrestleMania for a reason. All right, I'm just going to leave that out there. Okay, it's not my obsession. It's the people's obsession. All right. True, truly, they're fixated. Truly. <laughs> but hey, this is the podcast where we talk about video games. So, uh, it's not been a lot of stuff happening, but I'm pretty sure between the three of us, we played all the cool stuff. Looking at the list, uh, I think we played all the cool stuff. Uh, not all of it, but most, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Pretty thin couple of weeks. It's past a little bit. Yeah. What? Mm. Hey, there's some good stuff. And Rhett, I know you've been playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potentially the best game of the year so far, if you listen to uh, some people out there. I'd say so. I'd say really? so. Out of what I've played, out of what I've played, out of what's come out this year, yeah, absolutely. I was laughing as I was playing Monster Hunter earlier today. What does it say about a system where, like, it becomes a talking point and a, like a selling point of a game when it runs well on the system that it comes out on? You know, and I'm playing Monster Hunter and I'm like, man, this game is really, really good, largely in part because it runs as well as it does on the Switch. It's fucking great. 
uh, no matter what you're doing. I, I haven't come across any sort of slowdown. With that being said, you know, I'm probably 12 hours in and I have really done nothing. So I, I've seen a couple like big monsters, you know, uh, but no noticeable slowdown, handheld or docked. It looks fucking phenomenal. It runs really well. Um, I'm fairly new to the series. I've played a little bit here and there. But every time I do, same scenario plays out. I'll get into the game and I'll enjoy it, but then I'll just get buried in the mechanics. And I'll be so lost that I just won't, I, I won't be bothered to sort of dig my way out. But with this game, it's been really, really user-friendly. Beginner-friendly, I should say. Um, even when the, t you know, because there will be times where there's page after page of, uh, like, information to try to take in, you know, before you set out to do this or that. And it, it's kind of overwhelming. But there was never a time, or there, or there hasn't been a time yet, where I've felt overwhelmed. It's, it's all been really just kind of streamlined and, and the information is doled out at a pace that's uh, manageable, palatable. And for new players like myself, yeah, it's just been a really welcoming experience. Um, I, I've, I've seen like the veterans of the series talking online about how it's the best parts of all the games coming together in like this fucking just perfect, you know, Monster Hunter uh, adventure. And, man, through the first 10 or 12 hours, I can see it. I can see, uh, I can see how everything is coming together really well. Um, yeah, the, the loop has got me hooked from a very, very early point in the game. Maybe within the first hour, I was hooked on uh, getting your crew together. Actually, I should say I was hooked from the character creator. You get in there and it's it's fucking awesome creating your character, but then you create your your palamute, your dog, and then you create your palico, your cat. And I'm like, holy shit, you get a dog and a cat? This is so fucking cool. I was hooked right there. And uh, yeah, the loop of grinding, getting gear, uh, building them up, building yourself up, man, it really, <laughs> it's got me hooked. This is a good game. Some people have said uh, best game on the Switch so far. I'm sure a lot of people will debate that. I'm sure a lot of people will, you know, fight for Breath of the Wild. I'm sure a lot of people will fight for Odyssey, but, uh, you know, I've only scratched the surface, but give me 100 hours and let's see. Uh, I could imagine myself saying that uh, this is probably the best game I've played on Switch. Wow. So <clears throat> compare this game for me to... Monster Hunter World. Because that is my World reference didn't... point for the series. Yeah, like World, that was one of them that I just, like, I enjoyed it. But mm -hmm. I felt like I, as a beginner, just like it wasn't very, uh, you know, it wasn't very inviting. It wasn't very uh, easy to, like, catch on to the, the loop of things. And I, I shouldn't say the loop, but it wasn't easy to catch on to the nuances of things. I didn't know which items did what and how to craft and how to do this and that. Like it, it wasn't very straightforward, I felt. But yep. in Rise, everything is right there. It's very easy to access your, uh, your like thesaurus, I guess you could call it. All the information is right there. It's all uh, laid out, you know, it's all straightforward. And like I was saying earlier, the pace at which they dole out information like, as a beginner, I can take it at, uh, you know, the pace that I need it to. But if you're a pro with a thousand hours of experience, you can get in there and within an hour, you'll be hunting big monsters and, and having fun, you know? Um, yeah, you can really play it how you want to. Yeah, that was definitely my complaint with World. Is that, you know, I played it for like eight hours, ten hours. And at that point, you're still getting just these multi-page info drops about this fucking mechanic and that mechanic and it's just so many layers of things that i didn't care about so that's uh that's promising Definitely. this feels like that gets rid of that problem and just focuses on the cool stuff yeah yeah i haven't come across a time yet where i feel like i'm just slogging through a, a book of of information you know it's you'll get a couple pages and then you'll go and you'll do a quest and and you'll learn a little bit and 
Um, yeah, everything seems really tight, really condensed. I wish that I had more of a reference, but uh, based off of what people have been saying on Reddit and everything, it just uh, it seems like they've cut a lot of, or, or I should say made a lot of quality of life improvements. One example is uh, drinking potions. When you drink a potion, now you get more of an immediate health boost. So you'll get a chunk that immediately uh, regenerates and then you'll get the, you know, over time regeneration. Yeah. Whereas I guess in previous games you would drink it and then it would slowly increase. So uh, just mm -hmm. things like that that they've made to sort of make the experience a little bit more fun. Nice. Yeah. I cool. love it. I highly recommend it. I, I haven't played any multiplayer yet, but I am dying to get in there with some other people. Oh, you're going to have to, man. Yeah. Start getting after those uh the big hairy monsters. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <clears throat> yeah. Well looking forward to reading your review whenever whenever that happens. Yeah, like I've like honestly I feel like I could write the review now, but I also don't. Like I've put twelve hours into it and I've I've seen like a lot and I've I well I feel like I've seen a lot, but again, I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. Um yeah, this is a tough one. Like to really give a good objective review, I'm like, I gotta have at least 20, 25 hours. But I'll have that out in the next few days. You gotta. I believe in you, man. Yeah. Uh, I'll just have to stop playing it to write it. That's true. Yeah. One thing I potentially don't believe in is that James is still with us because his image has been frozen for quite a few minutes on my end. James, are you there? Yeah, totally. Man, listen, <clears throat> I I don't have a lot of like a lot of input when it comes to the Monster Hunter franchise. I'm kind of in the same boat as everybody else here where I just bounce off of it repeatedly. But they're like, oh, you should try this one. It's going to be great. Ah, oh, you know, <laughs> jokes on you. Make it's that not. noise. <laughs> yeah. Make that noise after a couple hours and I'm just done. They, they, they fucking give you Monster Hunter World for free. With PlayStation Plus, if you have a PS5, it was just like, I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> yeah. But this this sounds good. This sounds promising. I'm with you on that. I'm totally with you on that. Um, this definitely seems like the one where Capcom is trying to broaden, uh, broaden the potential player base. You know? they've. I felt like Worlds was maybe or world was maybe, uh, you know, for the fans. And it was great, you know, for what it was. But I just feel like this one is much more accessible, really. That's that's the big thing with this. And it's Switch only, or is it on another platform? Switch only. So that's probably why it runs oh. as well as it does. Huh. Using the, uh, the RE engine as well. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So that's, uh, people have been talking about, obviously, lots of Resident Evil Switch rumors now that they see a game running as well as this one does. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Yep, still waiting for that next reveal of what RE game they're going to remake next. Four. Fingers crossed. Let it be four. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a weird one, though. Like a Code Veronica. Something that most uh, people have never played. I've seen a couple fans call that, make that call. Yeah, Code Veronica or something in between four. But, like, come on, Capcom, don't screw around. Just go to four. I wouldn't complain. Yeah. James, what have you been playing? Well, um, uh, I did kind of blaze through as much as I could which honestly wasn't that much of this weird pencil drawn horror game called listen, I don't know how to pronounce it. Right. I'm not going to try. It's going to come out all fucked. And I'm sorry to the people who made it. It's like Mundon or something like M U N D A U N. It takes place in the Swiss Alps. Every single texture you see in the game was drawn by a dude with a pencil in his sketchbook and then just transplanted mm. directly into the game engine. So it's, it's beautiful and unique and cool that way. And when things are happening, it's scary. But there is an unbelievable amount of walking back and forth and trying to solve 
esoteric puzzles in order to make any progress. And I'm not really all about that life. Like the amount of hours I put in versus the amount of progress I made, it's kind of fucked. Because like you just look around and you cover like every scrap of ground. You talk to everybody repeatedly. You'd like poke and prod like every surface with every object in your inventory. You're like, hey, maybe I'll make a cup of coffee. Maybe that'll kickstart something happening. But no, man, no, nothing to the sort. You just you just do the 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 the, the same circuit. You're like the barn, the sawmill, the house, the church. The, and you that over and over and over again trying to find the clue that moves the game forward which sucks because when things are happening it's amazing you're like you're you're spooked out you're terrified it's it's dis- truly distressing shit when it you know when it gets uh, enough runway and it can actually make things happen for you but just like all too often you're like you're doing laps man and it's not great it's my least favorite kind of gameplay. You're just yeah. hammering some of the items in your inventory. Like, I'll combine the razor blade with the coffee can. Nope, that's not a thing. <laughs> All right, I'll combine the razor blade with the lawnmower. Oh, nope, turns out it's already got a blade. That's not a thing. I guess I'll combine it. Yeah, just on and on and on, trying to hit on whatever combination. And when you get it, you're like, oh, fuck this. Come on. Yeah, w- one of the one of the roadblocks I managed to overcome... I, I couldn't figure out how to get the priest to open his fucking doors and like, you know, talk to me so I can move the game forward. And so I do my laps like God, like seven or 10 or 11 of them around this fucking game map. And then as I'm like in front of the, the church, I look up and in the distance, I see what kind of looks like a, a, a human figure on the top of a cliff. I can barely see them. And then, and then the, the, the click prompt the the E button or the left click or whatever just pops up for half a second. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I click the button. And then the the little girl, it turns out, who's on top of the cliff, throws a paper airplane down. And then you unfold it. And then the solution to the puzzle is you click on a rock that you've walked by 30 times. And this time you can interact <laughs> with it. And then it, 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 it fucking opens up a, a, a little hidden alcove where a key is so you can force your way into the church and just fuck, man. <laughs> like, I I don't have the time for that nonsense. Fuck that. Yeah. Does fuck anybody that. like that bullshit? If you like that bullshit, tell us. I've yet to find anyone that it finds that kind of gameplay engaging or rewarding. Is it at least worth it? to go through for the the visual style the visual experience because it sounds like it's at least a beautiful game i think if you had like a player's guide or something and you just wanted mm. to like experience this crazy bullshit for like two two or three hours yeah it's pretty rad i mean just the idea that this one dude like did all these pencil sketches and like created this whole world and like there's something really weirdly desolate and lonely about being up in these like swiss alps and looking through the wreckage of your grandfather's life and like mm-hmm. and like just the 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 way the soundtrack switches between like spooky ambience and like just like uncomfortable silence with like just the ticking of like some old wooden clock in the background it's just, it's, it, yeah it's got good atmosphere good ambience the pacing is completely bum jumped like there's it just needs a lot you need you need a player's guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even if you're willing to like stumble fuck your way through the the whole mess of puzzles, it's just like doing so fucks up the pacing of the horror atmosphere, right? So you're not like, oh, this was really scary four and a half hours ago when you first met this like mystery goat that keeps showing up at important story points. <laughs> And then miraculously left you alone while you did your circuit 37 times looking for that rock. (laughs) Yeah. It's amazing how that happens. It's pretty wild. So yeah, that was Mundon. Mundon. It sounds like one to keep on the list and pick up when it's on sale for a few bucks. Yeah. Yeah. If that's, if that's your jam, then by all means get in there, make it happen. I want to, it sounds 
intriguing at least i want to see this visual style in action yeah it's weird yeah. weird and intriguing it's a glowing recommendation it is weird. yeah <laughs> yeah uh i've been that playing looks something expensive james oh what <laughs> sorry what? just that's that, that sip of uh yeah there you go that looked expensive it's got it's it's not expensive Ah, uh, okay. It, it's difficult to get cheaper than this, and if you can, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry to cut you off there, Paul. No, it's, it's all good, mate. <laughs> We're getting important information about James's uh, taste. <laughs> yeah. As cheap as possible without poisoning oneself. Yeah. Accurate? Yeah, I... Um... I just I, I I I have a much stronger palate for cheap blended scotch. Good malt stuff just like tastes too much like fucking Scottish bog. I I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I I feel you on that. With, like you, feel we you ain't drinking for the flavor. Like you licked the underside of some sort of fucking. 400 year old piece of wood <laughs> <laughs> nice plenty of people live for that yeah it, they can have it so more more good good scotch for them have fucking get after it <laughs> anyways uh i've been playing something that i think i can recommend uh and the um the dialogue about this game on the internet seems to be incredibly, extremely, unbelievably positive. People seem to feel like this is an incredible, fantastic game. I think it's pretty good. And I'm talking about It Takes Two. Ah, yes. Yeah. Hazelight Studios and EA. Yeah. Uh, Hazelight, uh, last thing they made was A Way Out, that co-op yeah. oh, nice. prison escape game. Nice. It's pretty cool. It's a good game. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, it Takes Two is very much in that style. Uh, it's co-op only, either on a couch or remotely. And uh, amazingly for EA, they have provided a friend pass. So if I own the game and I want to play co-op with James and he doesn't have the game, that's totally cool. We can do that. You can just download nice. the game and play with me. Uh, so that's pretty cool. If you, uh, you know, are doing the thing you're supposed to do and not seeing people in real life. Uh, and it's a pretty good game. It's got some some surprisingly good animation. Uh, it's about a a husband and wife who get transformed into dolls. One made out of clay, one made out of wood, and you go on some adventures in the yard and uh, in the shed and things like that, trying to become un undollified. And there's there's plenty of uh, weird household characters that come into play and. Some pretty funny dialogue. It's fun. It's... Did you go through a way out? Yes. Long ago. Right. F feels like forever ago. That was not that many years, but. And uh, from what you remember, would you recommend the new one? The new, what's, what's it called? It Takes Two? It Takes Two. Uh, is, it, is it better than a way out? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I mean, his. Go ahead. I was gonna say, Hayes like has like the one thing they do, so presumably they're just constantly getting better at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the maybe there's something that I haven't seen yet. I'm on I don't know the third or fourth chapter of the game. Maybe there's something I haven't seen yet that is absolutely special and unreal. But up to this point, it's pretty standard kind of co-op platforming puzzle solving nonsense. So you know, like the one player. Uh, at, at one point has the ability to use the head of a hammer to like hit things and, and break stuff and the other player can throw nails to hold things in place and do stuff like that you gotta work together to get through the stuff the, the puzzles are never that challenging and the battles aren't that challenging either I've just been playing with my wife and she's you know competent enough but let's just say moving and looking we're not doing that we're not doing that at all ever and it's it's too difficult so and we've been managing just fine so far so you can definitely play this with just about anybody and have a pretty good time 
yeah seems pretty promising i'll definitely check that out i was a fan of a way out so i'll definitely check this out yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 definitely a fun ride <clears throat> um i would av- avoid watching any video of it because some of the characters and stuff are pretty pretty charming pretty mm-hmm. endearing and it's, it's well worth saving that for the experience of playing through the game with somebody cool. okay what else have y'all been playing Rhett, i see undermine undermine yes and uh, if i wasn't yeah pl- if i wasn't playing monster hunter um i would be playing undermine um it's really filled the gap in my life that hades left when i finished that it's certainly not you know it's it's not hades but it is a fantastic roguelike um it's all about collecting gold and upgrading your characters and you know you you essentially beat these uh this this group of bosses through these series of caves or, or dungeons to collect like these keys i guess you could say um i haven't gotten that far in the game but it's, there's going to be some sort of uh, world threat at the end of collecting these keys uh, once you open up this door there's going to be some sort of i don't know big boss fight or something um, but it's just fantastic uh, the upgrades are all fun um, it's like hades though in that the combat and really everything you do is just like really it's really like uh just like crunchy and nice like every every like attack every uh every action and reaction in the game uh it just has like a good feeling to it you know uh, when gold like shoots out of a rock it'll clink all over the ground and uh when you beat an enemy like they'll uh explode into like dust or whatever and just like it's really well made all the little effects and everything and and the sound design is just really really on point um it's not too difficult but i mentioned in my review that there are some difficulty balancing issues i think you'll get a little bit further into the game and you'll go into one room where you fight a few bats and then you'll go into the next room and you've got like two of these necromancers and two of these like ninja assassin dudes that can disappear and you got this and that and so that's it feels a little bit unfair at those points but the flip side of that is when you or after a few upgrades essentially you know the the difficult rooms become less difficult so put a few hours in and and uh the the balancing issues certainly become less of a less of a thing uh but yeah super addictive really well made um i highly highly recommend it it's on like everything i think um is it better than rogue heroes they're different games they're different games uh rogue heroes obviously like if you have people to play it with i'd recommend rogue heroes but uh as a single player game i don't know i think maybe i'd go with undermine the loop is really really fun um the hub area that you have is cool when you die you go back to your little like mine hub where you've got uh, a a science lab and like a blacksmith area and all kinds of different rooms that you're uh, constantly working on and improving and, and building up. I said at the start of this that all the upgrades and stuff are a lot of fun and that is a huge part of it. Like I haven't seen anything yet that I'm like, eh, I don't really want to waste my time with that. Everything is awesome and I'm constantly finding myself sitting there like oh shit do i want this or that and i'm that's you know that's the dilemma with this game spending five minutes not knowing if i want this that or that or yeah it's a good time i like the art style art style is cool i like how every time you die you essentially come back as like a new character uh you're not like a descendant but you're just they, they sort of explained it in the story at least where i'm at right now it's sort of been explained as where you're just sort of like an entity kind of where where one of you dies and then another one comes and takes your place and um yeah it's, it's interesting like that i i was saying like it's not like hades in in a lot of the sense the story certainly isn't there but i'm so early on still that 
I feel like, you know, it could, it could maybe, you know, it could get a lot better than what it is right now. There's really not much story there, but I feel like it's building up to something, you know, more important. Is it early access or is it finished? Uh, no, it's finished. Yeah. It's version 1.0. Yeah. All right. Um, I have to take a look I, at this guy. Yeah. I'm uh, pretty sure though, the, the developer already confirmed like DLC and stuff though. So sweet. I'm sure there will be updates coming soon. James, you're looking like All you've right. got a question somewhere in that, in that mind. Um, <clears throat> I uh no, I don't know. I, it's interesting that you you've you've had a hard time really latching on to any sort of significant story. I feel like that's a a pretty common problem for roguelike games where like they due to the the essential design of like the maps and how things are laid out and how things appear uh where they could be just anything they a lot of developers find it really hard to slot story into those same spaces. And I think there's been like a, a, a tiny handful of games that have made any kind of progress in that. Like, um, Hades did, it. uh, what's that one with the family of hunters? Children of Morta. That's the one. They they do That's great. Where like the story advances, no matter how badly you fuck up, they're like, oh no, things <laughs> will still happen. You you could you could whiff it extremely hard every time, and they'll still like the story uh, just kind of happens in front of you. You're like, oh good, because I'm very bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably put maybe Dead Cells in that category as well. They do that game does a great job of generating intrigue about the world with just the number of locked doors and places you can you know rap on a door and have nothing happen you're like well shit how do mm. i get something to happen yeah. here and it does kind of just naturally happen as you progress and grab the various upgrades and things um, good, good good but yeah yeah it's pretty rare 100 percent right james i recognize like i was completely spoiled with hades getting addicted to roguelikes <laughs> with hades from hades i was just completely spoiled like the big thing that got me addicted to that game was the story. And so I've got to, you know, keep that expectation in check. I recognize and, and, uh, but I just feel like Hades, like it laid out the formula in an incredibly, you know, easy to understand format. Like it's die, die five times and advance the story a little bit, you know, give us a little chunk of, uh, of, of dialogue to advance the story to to push me forward for another five runs very easy very very easy um yeah it's all about the time and effort i guess i guess when hades you know if if your developers have three years and and two years in early access to make a game then sure they can put 150 hours of story into something yeah speaking of early access roguelike games i gotta check back in with rogue legacy 2 I haven't Ooh. tried that in quite a while. And uh, yeah, last time I played it, it was really early. Like, there was one biome, not a lot of story going on. But man, as one of the best roguelikes in history, uh, or the descendant of the best rogue, one of the best roguelikes in history, it's got big shoes to fill and seemed to have a lot of promise last time I played it. So I got to check back in with that one, see where they're at. Because it's an early access. Don't know if I mentioned that. Extremely um, early, yes. So <clears> early. <throat> Talking like 0, 0.0 something. Early. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, the other thing I've been playing is going back. Back into the well of Fallout yeah. 4. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know why. I just... You know, I had this Xbox Series X sitting there. I was like, what do you play on an Xbox Series X? And then I realized that you can get Fallout 4 to play at 60 frames per second on your Xbox Series X. Oh, shit. So I was like, okay, well, let's see how this goes. Because I totally bailed on that game before the end because I got bogged down in all the radiant quests and trying to save all the settlement. Anyways, it doesn't matter because that's the shitty part of the game. But it turns out there is some cool part of the game. And that cool part of the game is the survival mode. 
which is incredibly tense because uh survival mode if you've not played it in a in a fallout game before uh only allows you to save when you sleep oh so you sleep on an owned bed or a sleeping bag in the middle of nowhere that's how you save and that's the only way to save but if you sleep at a bed that you don't own or doesn't have a roof over it you're running the, the risk of getting sick or getting some kind of massive debuff for the next several days in the game uh so basically you just kind of save anytime you make it back to a settlement you own which is not that often so a lot mm. of the earlier uh story quests and side missions in the game that were total breezes in the, the main game become these super intense terrifying experiences where you know that a single shot can kill you because uh the way they make survival mode harder is not by making the enemies bullet sponges they're all quite squishy you can pretty much kill them with a headshot but they can also do the same to you so <laughs> you've got to be incredibly careful or find a silenced gun which are quite rare as well so uh mm -hmm. i'm playing through some of that and it's it's better than I gave it credit for, except for the speech system and the generalized story of the whole game kind of sucks balls, but gameplay is quite compelling. Especially in 60 frames. Woo! It sounds nice. Oh, so smooth. Using all those teraflops for a good, a good cause. Oh, yeah. <laughs> James, I know you've been playing a couple of little something else's. What's well, uh, let's talk for a little bit about Story of Seasons. Mm -hmm. I <clears throat> I didn't know anything about this series. I know there's been a million of them, uh, and they've been around for, like, years. And apparently, that's what Harvest Moon is called now. And if you see games out there that are called Harvest Moon, it's because Natsume, like, bought the license... But it's, like, not the same people. So, like, the new Harvest Moon that's out right now is, like, by, like, a totally different team. And Story of Seasons is what they all started working on instead, like, seven years ago. Um, huh. Yeah. So, uh, this one, Pioneers of Olive Town... I, I I I I started playing, and lo and behold, holy shit! This is just this is just Harvest Moon. And also, if you cut your farming teeth on Stardew Valley, it's just fucking Stardew Valley. Okay. <laughs> and most importantly, that's I found out that's literally all I wanted. I was just like, I don't I don't want crazy new farming game. I just want more farming game. And so when they're like. Here, the mayor shows up to your house before you've even set foot in the fucking door. Um, here's some tools. Here's how to use those tools. You sleep in a tent. Have fun upgrading to a log cabin. And I was like... <laughs> just like little like mechanism clicked in my head. I'm like, sick. All right, I guess I'm doing this for the next 14 hours. <laughs> yes. Man, I'm so happy to hear that you like it because I've been eyeballing this game. And yeah, I, I want to get it now. Um, yeah, so basically, if you haven't played a, a cute casual farming sim, I don't know what to call them, because they're not really farming sims, because you're not yeah. really farming, yeah. but, like, um, if you haven't played one in a while, and you want to again, this will fit like a glove. You, um, the, the, um... There's a lot of talk about how there was like a day one patch that had to drop to make things more playable, but I didn't even get the fucking code until like the day before the game came out. So my experience was smooth as butter. Um, and it's very smooth and streamlined and, and polished. So like every resource you pick up, you can very quickly transform into something. Um, the the process for like upgrading your house and upgrading your tools is basically instantaneous as soon as you have the materials you take it to the guy and he does it immediately there's none of this like come back in three days and your shit will be ready it's like no no it's done it's done here's your tools go do whatever um and like you just 
you just have to like uh to make more progress you have to like physically build the bridges to take you to other parts of the farm to do the mine as you get the better shit and boy oh boy you can do that really fast um and like you don't really have to interact with the other members of the town if you don't want to, which is cool because I generally don't. I'm kind of a weird <laughs> solitary hermit when I play farming games. I, I I got to like, I think it was my second Stardew Valley save file before I ever even tried getting a partner. You know what I mean? Like romancing somebody, starting a family. And like, I don't really care about <clears throat> that in this game. Like, but it's out there. There's There's lots of people in town. There's a lot of people in the village. Uh, a lot of eligible uh, members of the opposite sex that you can, you know, woo or whatever. And, um, uh, yeah, the character customization is pretty robust. You can, like, choose from a ton of different hairstyles and outfits. And you have to, like, make the thread to make the cloth to make the clothes. But, you know, <laughs> you, you can build yourself some cool shit. Um, you... I found myself just like overflowing with like certain kinds of resources. Like you get a fridge in your little log cabin and it's crammed. It's completely packed. I, I built like three or four storage units outside just to, like fill all the like the offloaded stuff and like the extra shit. Like I'm, I'm overflowing with prepared meals and raw ingredients and like the, the, I don't, because again, there's things I don't know how new they are because I haven't played a Harvest Moon game ever an official one except for like rune factory which i don't know yeah. and um you, you upgrade your axe or whatever two or three times and suddenly you can like charge swing it and like five trees in a four square radius around you will all like fall over at once and you're like ah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. um yeah yeah if you if you want like the a, a, the next farming game then shit get this one good it's compelling eat your life stay up all night chopping down trees going in mines fuck <laughs> total farming power fantasy with disturbingly adorable animals yeah um some of the art gives me real mobile game vibes and like same with like the key art and promotional art and the box art. I'm like, this is really fucking gross, but actually in the game, it looks fine. You know, I hate the music, which is unusual for me. Big music guy. Love it. Love a good tune. Hate this shit. Hate it. Turned on mute immediately. Listened to it for like an hour. I was like, well, nope, nope. That's not with that. And on my end, I immediately Google the soundtrack <laughs> so I can hear how bad this is, but after I, the podcast, it, I don't want to ruin the yeah, podcast, so we'll listen. It's it just uh, I've never really liked the music in farming games very much, and this was like the apex of that, where I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't like this the most. <laughs> Got it. it just bumps me out. Fuck, I don't know. <sighs> but yeah, story of seasons. <laughs> well, well, there you have it. Would you say that like you could easily see yourself sinking a hundred hours right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. No. One, no. No question. Yeah. Right. There's there. There will be that much content there at launch, essentially. Oh yeah. Um. And there's an expansion patch, expansion pass that I think kicks off like almost immediately. Like you, you can buy it right away, oh, okay. and then they start dropping content for it within like in a month i think nice they they cool. have a whole schedule laid out i don't know if it's out there or whatever but like yeah there's an expansion pass and it will be cool nice <laughs> i think it's a ringing endorsement cool Shall we uh, move on into the news and see what's going on out there in the world of video games? I see that Cyberpunk finally got <laughs> that patch. The one patch that everyone was waiting for and the one that the game truly needed and solved all the problems. Right, James? Fuck, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, uh, I was uh, I was working today and uh, watching Twitter, see, looking for you know, just seeing what's up. 
And uh, there was a story from like yesterday where they're like, oh, the expansion, the the patch 1.2 is coming, but they don't know when. They just say soon. There's no date. And then an hour later, uh, 1.2 is out. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, sure. Uh, people are making jokes about like the fix list. Like somebody photoshopped in the like the uh, a JPEG of the list over top of that ship that was stuck in the zoo is going to help. Like it's about that size. <laughs> it's enormous. Uh, you see the word fix apparently in the pat in the patch notes a uh, couple hundred times, 247, 247 <laughs> times you see the word fix in the patch notes. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ. If you want an idea of like where they're at. And, um, <laughs> but like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking insane. It's, it's huge. It's enormous. It's a book. Um, but also fuck it. Cause like, oh, I'm not playing this fucking the- game again. Cause yeah, like all the cut story Straight contents, up. all the all the features are still gone. It's still a like weird shambling meat skeleton, fucking stumble fucking around the 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 bare environment they've erected for it. Like I don't care if it runs like butter in a fucking griddle. It's still gonna be like the boring game that like. I dropped it. I, I completely dropped it. It ran perfectly fine in my PS5. I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> I only beat it because I had to review it. And yeah. I needed to see where it went. But uh, mm. uh, for references sake, I just did a quick copy paste on the change log, the patch notes, and which is mm-hmm. 8,000 words long. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. I don't have any idea how many of these changes are substantial or trying to fix you know important things the first one is the cop spawn radius for when the player commits a crime has been increased so the cops might start from farther away yeah is that what what we needed 100 percent. i'd say i'd say it's fixed now yeah that might have been the only issue actually as long as they did that and they fixed that bug where you were getting launched 400 feet into the air when you punched a window oh man that was so rad though <laughs> yeah. yeah it was kind of like, time. not a bug shoot a through feature. half the city just like it's like oh i gotta get to the other side of town better punch a window <laughs> <laughs> man yeah i think you're right james this is, all the fixes in the world are not gonna fix this game because the core problem remains. I saw this game twice at E3, and they showed off two missions. And both of those missions seemed cool and diverse and interesting. Those are the only two interesting missions in the fucking game. <laughs> like, and I'm not kidding. Devastating. I, I know plenty of people who played through this game, wanted to love it, didn't love it. I told them to go back and play Deus Ex Mankind Divided Mm. or Human Revolution. Take your pick. And they're better games. They're far better games. And they're seven years older. I don't buy any of the technical bullshit that they spewed about it. You know, having to run on a PS4 and an Xbox One because they announced this thing before those even existed. So. True. it, It just doesn't hold water. There's. I'm sure there's going to be a huge documentary at some point documenting all the problems mm-hmm. behind the scenes, but man, what a clusterfuck. I wonder what's next for them. Uh, Witcher, Witcher 4? Do you think they'll be able to get that kind right? of clout ever again? <laughs> like, I, I feel like they have, they, have, they have shit in the punch bowl. Like, there's no... Yeah, it was bad. Like, what are they going to do? <laughs> Fuck. I think they have to, like... I think what'll happen is the company will get passed around or, like, the top, the money guys will change hands or a bunch of them will leave. Or, like, some venture capitalist will swoop in to save the company and then they will gut its fucking corpse, and then all the talented people in CDPR 
will leave, start a smaller company, mm. and then just do the whole thing over again. And they'll just make like one or two better games than the one that destroyed the previous company. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. It's a good prediction. Sounds f- similar to uh, Bungie. Yeah. Or to uh, uh, Konami. Konami, yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. yeah, rest in piss, you fucking ghouls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, still holding out hope that some of those Konami properties are coming back and some of those Sony rumors were, were true. Just waiting, Maybe. Though. Yeah. I believe. I believe. Do you though? I think that MGS one remake is is like I don't know if I believe the rumor that it's done, but yeah, that's seeming a little more sketchy at this point. But it's just like like MGS is arguably the defining game of that system, and of all these remakes that we've seen, Spyro and Crash and and this and that, man, you would think MGS would. Would uh, you know be top of that list? I don't know. Maybe I'm just coming from the perspective of a Metal Gear Mark, but yeah. Well, I think what we can say for sure is that it's all going to be all right because CDPR adjusted the dirt quality on medium and low settings in Cyberpunk. I feel better. Hundred <laughs> percent. James, you were going to say something actually relevant, I think. No, fuck no. I, um, oh, I was going to say that Final Fantasy VII is probably the defining game of the PlayStation. Fair. And, that's fair. And, yeah. and yes, a little further back. Not a lot, but a little. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yep. Uh, uh, speaking of old games, Ooh. the PSN stores mm-hmm. for the PlayStation... Three, the PlayStation Portable, and the PlayStation Vita are all getting shuttered in July and August. Mm. So, like, if you have download codes from those things, you can still renew them afterwards for a while. But um, no new purchases after that point. Apparently, this is a fun thing that somebody, some some uh, games journalist or somebody, was like dredged up an old quote from Jim Ryan. <laughs> about this very same subject. The guy, the one of the big dogs at Sony PlayStation has no fucking idea what the big deal is about these old games. He's like, nobody plays these things. They don't care about them. Fuck them. Why are we working to preserve them? There's no point in that. Uh, you know, like, it's just like, it's like, hey, Mr. Ryan, how about you... Um, Fist yourself with a PlayStation Move controller, mm-hmm. or two of them in sequence, one after the other, like a tandem bicycle for your asshole. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Hmm. How many PS3, PS Vita, and PSP games could you actually buy on PSN? Because that's pretty long ago. I don't personally remember how, like, what proportion of games were actually available to buy online at that point. Uh, like, a, it's 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 uh, it's not anywhere near the library. Like, it's it's yeah. a portion, but even considering how much it was, like, it's a lot of fucking games. Mm. Like during the PlayStation Three era on PSN, they were dredging up like everything they could think of it was like will will a handful of people buy this sure is it in english no no it's not but that doesn't seem to matter they'll do it anyways you you could get um there was like uh a, a playstation one game that used like full motion video captures of like just like men like like Japanese men in like very little clothing arranged in strange shapes. It was like a side scrolling shooter. I can't remember what it was called, but it was completely fucking bananas and it was not in English. And you could just buy it on the PSN at one point. It was like 
yeah, if you want that in your world, that that that's the thing you can experience. How many days until there's an announcement from Microsoft? We're adding all PlayStation 3 games to Game Pass for free. Based on the announcements they made over the month of March, probably not that long. We bought yeah. the PlayStation 3 and all of its games. <laughs> we used Phil, our Phil. fuck you money for... <laughs> For true good. Bill Gates peeled off a, a tiny, tiny, infinitesimal slice of his wad. And instead of buying the country of Peru, we're getting the PlayStation 3 library. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bill Gates could not spend all of his money before he died, if he was doing so every second of his life, for the rest of his life, he could probably buy all of the PlayStation 3 library. <laughs> should we uh, Should we talk about that? Should we talk about Game Pass? James. Yeah, man. What's happening? They're dropping... They're dropping dimes. They're dropping okay. real cash. Well, um, there was an announcement this month about how a whole bunch of Bethesda games are going to be an Xbox Game Pass, and that's pretty cool. Mm. And then they announced that Outriders is going to be on Xbox Game Pass on day one, and that's pretty rad. And then they were like, oh, yeah, and then Undertale is going to be on Xbox Game Pass uh, at the end of this month or, like, sometime in March. And then they dropped this, like, infographic of, like, 15 other fucking games that are going to be an Xbox Game Pass, including Octopath Traveler and... um Near Automata, which, as far as I'm concerned, are the only two ones I care about. And there's other games, they don't matter to me. There's some Star Wars games, and there's some big ticket games, there's some AAA things that are coming down the pipes that are going to be playable either like now when this podcast drops or like very shortly after this podcast drops. But yeah, Octopath Traveler is going to be free on Xbox Game Pass. If you haven't played it, one, why? What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing with your life? You've been doing it wrong. Do a different thing, which is play Octopath Traveler. But now you can on on, on Xbox Game Pass. Just remember I, 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 that you got to turn the voiceover to Japanese before you pick up the Huntress character. Yes. Uh, or you'll hate your life. Jesus Christ, yes. By all by all means. Um, they, they, they add... What? syllables and, and suffixes to words that don't require them if you know what English it's... sounded like or was written down as in like I don't know not Shakespeare's time but like just after Shakespeare's time like somewhere in that region yeah. you try to read this dialogue you um you'll break a thing in, in rage a controller yeah it's a, like a screen they're they were going for that old English thing but they added Again, too many syllables and too many letters to everything. It's yeah. it's beyond the thous and the the thous and whatnot. It's it's been a long time since I played it, but it is it is several stages beyond that. And you can hear it in the actors' voices as she's the trying same. to play. Yeah, this this character. She's like, "What the fuck is this?" voiceover you you can you could practically hear the cut content where she'll deliver a line and she'll like cover the mic in her hands and be like are we are we sure about this <laughs> it just just like it says on the page right like something if yeah is that is that, is that how we're gonna do push the book all of my dialogue yeah and, and yeah those those tapes are somewhere mm -hmm. somewhere in square enix's vault where they're just like <laughs> it's like yeah this is exactly how it's being written for the entire game and then yeah it's a uh, it's weird yeah but uh, yeah, near being on there, Giant Get, as one of the best games of the generation, as we talked about several months ago in our Games of the Generation yeah. podcast. Top of the pops, baby. So good. What else is going on? Oh, apparently there's a new PSVR. Mm -hmm. Well, they're like, they're like, Showing up peripherals and they're like talking about little like 
sides around at bits where like there's a lot of like chitter chatter about how oh yeah they're they're making I think like a next generation like VR controllers and shit and it's just like yeah. so yeah PS5 PS4 PS VR at some point right gotta be there is actually this is interesting there is actually a marketing term for the kind of marketing Sony has been engaging with the PS5 in general with the, you know the wired articles and and just kind of this slow slow burn it's called a rolling thunder launch where huh. you drop ideas every once in a while and there's a little spike in interest and then it drops back down but it doesn't go as low as it used to and then you do another thing and the spikes up even more and you can see uh the effect of that by how insane the hype was by the ps5 launch when they didn't really do that much they just kind of talked about it here and there over the course of eight or nine months and they're doing the same thing with the psvr again by saying check these out these are some cool little finger touchy controllers and they've got haptics and stuff just like the dual sense just wait a couple of months down the road they're going to drop some other little tidbit some other blog post about the new psvr they're doing the same thing rolling thunder baby yeah, I'm 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 here for it, you know. Uh Yeah, but they they do desperately need to upgrade that system because original PSVR is locked to some 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 resolution that is not for human eyes anymore. You can't <laughs> you can't expose people to that. It is actually like, um, it is actually 1080, but it turns out when that is three quarters of an inch from your eyeball it's it doesn't look that good yeah like it's like it's it's officially 1080 but it's basically 720 like functionally it never gets higher than that or like or something like that because like as far as i know like no game in psvr when you're viewing it through the headset looks better than 720 like i don't know what mm. the, the fucking deal was but like maybe not at the end of its run but like for most of the time that you use that system it was just like you get the like the gross like screen tearing like I've used other headsets and they didn't fuck me up that bad but the PSVR mm. oh it's grimy yeah very very grimy. I love it fucking PSVR is great I don't know what y'all were struggling with mm. have you ever played other a different than headset it... Rhett touche <laughs> I mean, don't because you'll ruin the PSVR for yourself. Yeah, no, yeah. you'll fuck it up forever if you try literally anything else. Literally anything. Uh, um, the, the tracking is is just god awful compared awful. to and, literally and everything the, else. Oh, t- well, yeah, yeah, terrible. But um, I thought it was pretty good for a first attempt. Other than you having to strap a bucket to your head. And people were talking about how they would actually warm it up. They would they would heat it up as if it was a fucking cheap sedan in, in the winter. Oh, no. Like, yeah, they'd start it up and run it for 10 minutes. So then when they strap it onto their fucking faces, they wouldn't fog up as bad. I don't know about that. I, I, I yeah, I, <laughs> I think people are just fucked, but. I think it's bad. Yeah. It sounds like fake news to me. Um. Speaking of 720, this isn't on the dock, but it's something that I've been rattling around in my brain for a while now. Because this month, like every month that came before it for the last four years, there's been a, a crop of rumors about the Nintendo Switch Pro, which I can't stress this enough, doesn't exist. There's no announcements from Nintendo. There's no anything substantial or concrete anywhere in the zeitgeist, in the ethos, anywhere. Is there any fucking hard evidence that a Switch Pro exists? However, uh, there was a Bloomberg article this month where they were like, Oh, Samsung is making a million units of a a 7-inch 720p screen that 
uh, our insiders tell us means that the Switch will have a 7-inch screen. And I'm like, just going to roll right over that 720 part, huh? I'm just going just to <laughs> walk right past that, are you? <laughs> so that that's that's the first thing that people have been latching on to. The other thing, and I, I, I searched for hours trying to figure this out. Some guy, some fucko on Resetera, Resetera, the, the site, hopped on a thread about the next generation Switch being like, <clears throat> oh, the things that NVIDIA is doing with their uh, shield technology, because that's what the Switch is basically Frankenstein out of, is a portable NVIDIA machine. And apparently, they have made their DLSS tech work on their portable units, which is Ooh. awesome because that, if you're not familiar, it's, it's like, um, deep learning, super sampling. So like basically giving you frame rates and resolutions that were previously impossible nice. using crazy machine learning. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to really get a, a grip on how good it looks because you kind of need the right machine to even perceive it. <laughs> but like, but if they, if they have apparently made these kind of strides with the portable tech, then that does bode well for whatever Nintendo does next. But mostly, and I've been reading a lot of these articles, mostly when you read another one from some fucking site being like, this expert says that the Switch Pro is coming this year. A, fuck that person. They don't know that. They're they're what they're doing is they're making the 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 person in question will be an analyst. And this is important. Because what this means is that they are a professional guesser about things. Okay. So 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 they, they have a, a job at one of these sites or one of these magazines where, where they will make a guess about whether or not Nintendo is going to make a new system uh, this year, which, again, I keep coming back to this point, and I'm sorry, but fuck you. Of course they are. The Nintendo Switch is four and a half years old. They're definitely making another system. <laughs> it's like it's like the Call of Duty pattern, only it's a little bit more stretched out for every console generation. So a lot of these like rumors about consoles are, are based on the fact that Big companies make new ones every so often, <laughs> but there's nothing. They've got nothing. They're 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 fucking. They're building castles out of sand. They have fuck all. And listen, a happy to be proven wrong. If some guy comes out and he's like, "I'm the deep throat of Nintendo. I I know all the fucking inside bits. I had to kill a guy to get this information. It was not worth it. You know." <laughs> Great. Prove me wrong. B, eventually these idiots are going to be right because eventually they're going to make a new system. But it's going to take so long that if it is a Switch Pro, the Nintendo has fully fucked up because now it's we're at next new console time. We're at next gen time and then they haven't delivered. That's bad. Or it will be a next gen console. And of course it will because it's been six years, right? Like that's that's what we're going to get. Yeah, I, I mean, unless, like, there's no Switch Pro that's going to compete with the PS5 or the, the new Xbox. No, and they won't try, and they'd be stupid to do so. Right, yeah, so, like, you're totally right. I agree with your point in that I think they've kind of shot themselves in the foot here. It's it's a really weird time for them to be releasing a Pro, but with that, with that new technology you were talking about, man... That doesn't bode well for Switch owners because that sounds like an upgrade that you can't afford to not make. You know, I I was able to get away with like the new 3DS XL. I was able to get away with not getting that for, for a long time ever. But this upgrade, you know, something like that, shit, man, you couldn't miss that. Yeah, basically what they'd be doing is they'd be cutting their install base in half. Yeah. They're like, all right, great. We're going to make this hot new system. And suddenly, whenever t whenever we make a new game, it has a quarter as many potential <laughs> customers and users as it did before we made the system. Yeah. 
Now, like they could do the the straddling thing that companies have been trying to do where they're like, we'll just make a PS5 version of this game. But that has been gross. And it relied on the fact that the two systems are extremely similar. Mm -hmm. Like, like the upgrades between the PS4 and the PS5, which are two fully different console generations, they're not like crazy. Yeah. So like, they Nintendo could really... You know, they, they'd be in great shape if they made an upgrade that was so insubstantial that you don't really need it, and then they won't sell any, and then they're fucked. Yeah. I mean, I could see them doing something that they haven't done before. Like, if they're really going to use DLSS and use it to its its maximum potential, they could do something that was you know the same resolution of the screen on the on the portable and the same output resolution it it goes for 1080p but and uses mostly the same hardware but it's got DLSS this time so now it can actually get more towards that 1080p and more towards that 720p or the frame rate is stable so things like the outer outer worlds don't suck so bad on this console and DLSS is like an underrated technology. I watched a, a Digital Foundry video where they were looking at Death Stranding on PC and, and seeing how good this game looks because it's got DLSS built in. So they're comparing the, the PS4 Pro, which is 1440p and then upscales to 4K versus 4K on the PC versus DLSS 1440p upscaled to 4K. And the DLSS 1440p upscaled to 4K literally looks better than the native 4k the ai is smarter than actually making the image 4k that's crazy crazy like mind-boggling how they've yeah. done this but uh huge get for nintendo if they've actually they're actually putting this into a console truly and yeah if they were doing that and doing a big substantial upgrade to the hardware on the system I mean, there's potential they could be slugging with the big boys. Sure. But, but like, I don't think they want to. Yeah. So, who knows? Yeah, it just feels... A, n none of the rumors is substantiated in any way. Every time you go looking, and I've looked... Every time you're looking to see where did this information come from, you just run into this wall where it's like, oh, uh, we have an insider or our analyst predicts that one. I love. I love it when the, an article says analyst predicts that this is going to happen. I'm like, you professional guesser of things. Fuck off. Like, you don't know. <laughs> Analysts are predicting that the Nintendo will make a new console for the holiday release because otherwise they can't see them making enough money for this holiday season. But they will because they're very good at doing that. <laughs> and if they don't, they don't give a fuck. They have so much money to fall back on. <laughs> they could run at a loss for like two console generations and be fine. <laughs> They've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the Wii U was this like critic was this like commercial failure that like uh, uh satoru iwata like took a pay cut to to make up for he didn't have to he just did that because it 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 was him taking responsibility for what had happened to the company they weren't in danger of losing money <laughs> yeah It'd be really interesting to see what what goes down there yeah i don't know I, I can't see, at least for the foreseeable future, them cutting the install base like you were saying, James. Something yeah. like Breath of the Wild 2 comes out, it has to hit on the Switch. Mm -hmm. Whatever else is happening, maybe it comes to that too if, if it exists, but it has to be on the Switch. Well, with Breath of the Wild, it came out for the Switch and the Wii U. Yeah. So they could definitely do that. It could It could drop for the this console and for the super switch whatever the fuck they call it because like 
probably, I don't know. Th that's the thing. Nintendo tends to make moves that you literally can't imagine. Like, you're just like, I, I don't know what they're going to do next. And then they do what they're going to do next. And you're like, well, I didn't see that coming. I'm like, nah, man, they, we never do. <laughs> I'm here for the Super Switch, especially if they go back to the grand purple aesthetic. Oh, yeah, mm. obviously. Uh, yeah. Um, also, or, or, this is... or this... so, go ahead. Super Famicom. Super Famicom. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just what I was going to say. I was going to say total side note. I did actually buy one of those Switch conversion kits, Rhett. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. We're rocking the crystal blue now. Crystal nice. blue. Very, very nice. nice. I actually picked up. <laughs> Look at this guy. He, got it right he was here. ready for this eventuality. So, okay. So, so I've got this piece now. Oh, and it okay. is like, it's the frame. Yeah. But this involves ripping the switch apart completely. Like you're taking, you're fucking heating up the screen and ripping it off. Um,. I don't know if I've got the balls to do this yet, but this is like the last thing I got to do. Um, I actually just got a, a, a decal, I guess a decal, uh, to cover the bezel of the the switch as well. I don't know, staring at that black bezel <sighs> drives me crazy. I'm like, God, there's so much real estate there. Why? Why did you do this, Nintendo? Um, but yeah. Because they bought the cheapest screens they could possibly get away with. <laughs> yeah fuck. <laughs> so i will update uh with some pictures as far as that upgrade goes i'll be very yeah. interested to see your blue one and yeah. also what i got was this you know have you ever seen that switch like light up dock shield man it's fucking cool the the dock sits on it and you got this shield it glows you can set it to all kinds of things and then i get this custom metal gear plate made for it man it's crazy i'll take pictures i'll load it I'll, I'll upload them. All right. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. And that's the uh, that's the Switch customization zone, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for, for listening to our Switch customization yeah. podcast. Uh, James, what else is going on in the world of news? Well, I think. Oh, um, I threw in some details that I just found personally interesting. Uh, they're making a new Ninja Turtles game that's, like, based on Turtles in Time. Like, it's the same aesthetic. And they drop this trailer that uses the theme song from the 80s cartoon. And, oh. Uh, it looks so good. God, it looks good. so fucking good. It's just, uh, it's just, like, the the, the smooth animation and the, the beautiful pixel art. And, 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 and like, anytime they, a, a good reliable company takes one of those side scrolling beat em ups and updates it like when they did Streets of Rage 4 like that ooh good mm. good shit from like front to back and I think this is a a a similarly like prestigious company I think like Dot Emu is like publishing or yeah. handling some aspect of it and like looks choice I'm all about it yeah, like, they proved that this formula can work with Streets of Rage 4. That game is fucking awesome. It is so good. And yeah, it's different than the original games. And yeah, it's not quite as pixely. But get over yourselves. Uh, it's time to come to the 21st century and beat them up with a little bit more fidelity. I'm, I'm yeah. so here for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Fuck yes. Rad ass name. Yeah, and then uh, last but not least, the um, the Square Enix game that like seriously looks like an Unreal Engine tech demo, uh, Project Daphia, has a new name now. It's called Forspoken or something, and it looks good. It still looks good. It just looks just as good as it did previously. Beautiful in that way that was like, we're showing off the graphics of the PS5 and how cool it is. Um... Just you, like, using crazy powers and ripping around a huge, desolate world and, like, fighting giant monsters. I'm into it. You know. I'm not gonna... Yuck anyone's yum, especially when it comes to this game. 
Uh, I hardly know anything else about it aside from the fact that they dropped like a name reveal for it and like I think like a new trailer that shows off a little bit more of the action. And again, it reminds me of that like Unreal Engine 5 tech demo they showed off like uh, last year. Yeah, it does look a lot like that. Yeah, right? Just the, something about the environments that she's exploring and, and the way she's like traversing the terrain. Something about it just feels like we're here to show you off how many pixels and how many polygons we can cram into a single image. <laughs> we have to know. I don't think we know clearly at this point how many pixels can be crammed into a single image on a PS5. I'm confident they're trying to show us. Yeah. I, I need all of them. Uh, yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. But, you know, we'll probably see how many pixels in two years. Yeah, maybe. 2023? In two years. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. We've got that. We've got that. Uh, the FF Seven remake expansion this summer. Yeah, that's good. And then part two, sometime, twenty twenty two, maybe. Maybe. And sixteen, whenever. Who knows? Who knows? I, I, I can't even think about that game. I can't even like. I can't even like make room in my head or my heart for it is just like uh, final fantasy main series games have been such a like ridiculously slow burn since like since 13 Th 13 took so goddamn long to come out of the oven 12 took ages to come out of the oven they all they're all just such slow burners they were like we're making a new final fantasy i'm like fucking cool see you in five years <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the series kind of lost me at 12. Not because 12 is a bad game. 12 is a, an excellent game. But the age I was when that game came out, that was not what I was looking for. It was not the thing at that time. So I, you know, I had a ton of hope for 13, like return to form. And again, that was a, a big departure from the formula and from what they had done in the past being almost in totally linear even though past games relatively linear it was just having a mini map that showed you literally one direct straight path that you could take screen after screen after screen man i don't know i'm i'm looking for that big return to form that big release that shows yes this series still has incredible chops to tell a great story and be a technical masterpiece and have awesome music, great combat, mechanically brilliant. Let's see it. I'm hoping 16 is the one. And what is that expansion y'all mentioned? Oh. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. It's, it's just like the PS5 version uh, with like a little uh yuffie dlc they're tacking on for some amount i don't remember how much um but like you you can play as the ninja girl hmm. and it's like two two chapters of her story along with like yeah the trailer they released for integrate was only in 1080p so you have no idea how much better the new version of the game looks because you can't tell <laughs> It was really weird. Yeah. What's that about? <laughs> I like that. I think that's a flex. Yeah. <laughs> like, it looks good. You don't know how good. Shut up. <laughs> Fuck you. It's great. You're going to buy it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know you. We know you gamers. Yeah. You'll buy it. I probably will because I like Final Fantasy. But I've been spoiled by games like Bravely Default 2, which mm. I'm still playing obsessively mm. and probably will for another like two weeks. James, last take. we talked, you were you were like, it's good. Are you are you still there or has it flipped to great? Oh. Um 
Yeah, well, briefly default mechanically is, that's where my interest lies. It's the same with Octopath Traveler. There's hard mechanical systems in place in those games that I love. And then the story is just like a nice little bonus, you know? Bravely Default also has really, really good music, which carries a lot of weight with me. And the story's like, okay, it's it's fine. You know what's up. It's fairies. Mostly they're bad. That's that's what the previous games have taught you. You expect no different now. But like for me, the reason I play those games and obsess with them and, and love them is the fact that you can like they have a job system. And, like, all these different, like, skill combinations you can unleash to, like, make a boss fight go differently. Mm. And, like, there's all these weird little, like, game-breaking things you can do or, like, little grinding spots you can unlock or little, like, tricks you can try. Like, for every job you master, uh, the freelancer class gets stronger. And I'm at the point right now where, like, the first class you unlock in the game is now definitely the strongest one you can get but then you could also go back to beastmaster and capture monsters for a while and then those stats will go up and it's, it's a whole thing i could i could have a bravely default podcast it could just be that could just be what i could do a, a, a limited run series of like a scant 13 episodes where i just talk about that series of games because mechanically they are like a bottomless pit and that's what i love <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, two more weeks probably, and then I'll be fully wrapped up. Two more weeks, and then you'll be ready to replay Octopath Traveler on Game Pass. Mm. Yeah, I don't have an Xbox, so no. But um, uh, good plan. Yet, James. Yet. Mm. We'll see if you can resist. An Xbox? Yeah, I'll be okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> But James, there's an incredible catalog of first party titles that have not really been announced. Cool. Does the system come with an extra four hours a day where I can play the fucking thing? Because otherwise, no, I'm good. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I'll check into the bundles. I'll let you know. Mm. There might be a bundle with extra hours. Please, please do that. Yeah. Just more hours in the day just that, that that's like i used to have a thing where i was like i'm not an xbox guy that was like 12 years ago then the new argument against it was like i can't have another console in my life i don't i don't have the time <laughs> i can't i can't make that commitment <laughs> yeah i mean there is that but currently there's also the argument that it doesn't have any games that are worth playing that you can't play yeah, somewhere and else like didn't have them at launch doesn't have them now like you look on metacritic which is like a great you you can go there and you you forecast you see what games are coming out as they have a release count it's very useful for a person in our industry who reviews games you can look out and see what's coming up and the xbox series x release calendar on metacritic has a little tumbleweed that rolls across it every time you check like <laughs> PC games, if you check on the 18th of March, for example, in order to get to the 1st of April, you have to click through four giant pages of releases. If you do that with Xbox Series X, you will miss a month and a half by, like, hitting the scroll wheel twice. <laughs> and it's all shit that's on other systems. <laughs> Yeah. Bad it's, times. It's like basically. it's put up or shut up time. Yes, Game yeah. Pass is amazing if you want to pl if, you know, you want this one stop shop to play a bunch of things that are elsewhere. It's great. Yeah. Good on them for getting outriders. That's a good get. It's going to be great for a lot of people. Yeah. But where's the original content? Haven't heard shit about Hellblade 2 in close to a year. Mm -hmm. And what else do you have? Bethesda stuff? Yeah. I don't, 
I don't know. Which, what are all those which other they studios won't, doing? They won't commit to what what's going to be exclusive to Xbox yeah. and what's not. Like they won't. Like they're just being very cagey about that. I thought that they all but confirmed that the big ones, the Skyrims, the Elder Scrolls, they won't, or uh, the the uh, Fallout's, they won't be on, uh, or, or they won't be Xbox exclusives. They'll be on yeah. everything else. Yeah, uh, I bet that you know the new IP will be Xbox new IP, exclusive. Yeah. What's that? The space one. Starfield. Yeah, I bet that one's an Xbox exclusive. Who fucking cares? There, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Th- like. Yeah. Come circle back to me in six years when that fucking game comes out, and then maybe I'll be concerned <laughs> yeah. about that. But like, I doubt it. Yeah. I mean, they haven't released a real game since 2015. Oh, uh, so they put out Fallout 76, but no, no, that's a multiplayer mod for Fallout 4 that went through all a really like buggy extended testing phase <laughs> that continues to this day. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll just make this a yearly section where I go back and test Fallout 76 because it was about a year ago at the beginning of this whole pandemic that yeah. I promised to go back and look at Fallout 76 and it was still just as fucking broken as the day it came out. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's time. Maybe I should go yeah. back and look again, fellas. Oh, yeah. Watch is just awesome now. It's so fun. There's oh. so much to do. Fucking... It's a real tragedy because I do think that the map they built for 76 is an outstanding map. Uh, okay. It's probably the best map they've made in terms really? of the layout and the biomes and things like that. There's just not anything to do. Yeah, it's not you just play Valheim instead. Ooh, Valheim. Yeah, I still have dedicated that. servers, no more than 10 people per server. Uh you build bases and kill monsters and oh yeah yeah it's like 20 bucks <laughs> updated regularly made by like six guys yeah. <laughs> yeah hey i can get dedicated servers in fallout 76 i just have to buy that fallout one pass or whatever for several hundred dollars a year to get a dedicated server nice so i can yeah do that. that's a that's a that's bad fair. move that's a bad yeah. move bethesda yeah i think i think their heads are clouded with greed and hate because ESO has been making them like a lot of money every year and they're mm-hmm. like well obviously we can make people pay for shit they wouldn't ordinarily pay for I'm like no man <laughs> you, you can a lot of the time but arguably you shouldn't and like if people can find a better version that doesn't cost the same amount of money they'll go to it they'll find it yeah Somebody will make it. Somebody will start making it the day you announce your fucked up payment plan for your service that should be free. Somebody will be like, oh, I could I could fix that problem for you. Like how Path of Exile basically exists because Diablo 3 was such a fucking disgusting smoke show when it first released. They're like, we should give people a game that's like the good Diablo. And then they did. And it's still out there. And it's still getting updates. And it's still has a strong player base and it's still absolutely free. What I'm saying is that people will pay for the service until they don't have to anymore with somebody else. (laughs) That's true loyalty, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, boys, should we get out of here? Yeah. Call this a podcast. I'd say so. James's cheap scotch is gone. It is. Our hope for the future, barely existent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, There's a it's flicker. Way, way gone. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's been, that's been Press X the podcast. Episode six of the face season. Faces. <sighs> Three faces this time. Mm-hmm. Not just, uh, Rhett's purple crown. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, what's coming up in the next couple of weeks for you guys? You got any any stuff on the go? Any any cool things coming in that you're going to be playing? I'm going to play a bunch of Outriders. Nice. Yeah. And uh, Alex Thomas will definitely have a lot to talk about. <laughs> he will. Uh, <laughs> I will. Um... <clears throat> Fair. I, I, uh, I, cause I'm still waiting for the code. I started a second character in the demo. 
the tank. Mm. I can't remember what he's called. Devastator or something. Anyways, he's amazing. He just eats bullets for breakfast. He just run up to people and they're like, bam, bam, bam. And they're like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I hope they get uh, some of the changes that people were griping about in the demo into the final game. Some of the you know, shaky cam, really glitchy nonsense fixed up. But yeah. Yeah, um, I'll definitely I'll be playing just... it on Game Pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give, it a, give it a rock for uh, next time we're sitting around doing a podcast. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Me, I'll just be trying to find a PlayStation. Rhett, they're out there. Drop. I, yeah, are they? I know they're, people they're... who have gotten them very recently. Okay. Locally. Where? Locally, I want to say Walmart. Oh, Walmart was doing uh, midnight Eastern drops. So you got you got about forty five minutes. Just get in there. Bro. Yeah, man. Get in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll see what we can do. I still believe in you. I believe that you can do this. My my faith drops a little every time but hey i still got faith in you i think you can do this well you got more faith in me than i got in myself so i gotta you know i appreciate that <laughs> on that fun yeah. note <laughs> yeah let's uh let's get out of here let's get out and play our favorite roguelike <laughs> whatever that may be uh, if you've listened this far, if you watched this far, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Uh, and we hope to see you back here again real soon to talk about video games on Press X Podcast. And in the meantime, you can check us out on CogConnected.com or CogConnected on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those places. Lots of content. Check it out. And uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time. Peace, everybody. Bye.